Hello friends! A few weeks ago I did a video all about the Faber-Castell watercolor markers and I absolutely loved them. I had so much fun that when Black Friday deals came around I decided to buy another set of markers. This time I went with the Winsor Newton Pro Marker watercolor markers and it's a set of basic tones. I got these on Amazon for $29.99 which of course was Cyber Week deals. I think they're a little more than that now. These look like beautiful markers. I would say the packaging isn't quite as good as the Faber-Castell set if I had to compare the two. As a brand, Windsor Newton, of course, is known for its light, fast, high quality colors. And according to the website, it does say these are light, fast for a hundred years. So that's encouraging. These are dual ended markers. So they'll work the same way the Faber-Castell water-based markers do. You can use them as markers or you can use a water brush. And I have a ceramic palette here so I can do a little bit of mixing if I need to, but I'm really excited to use these. Now, for my design today, I was doing some relaxing coloring with my little eight-year-old niece. We were working on, you know, the adult coloring books that have those really cool designs and are so relaxing to just sit down with your colored pencils and color. Well, we were doing those and I thought, oh, these are so cool. What if I designed my own coloring page? So that's what I did today. There will be a link in the description for you guys to download this design. I simply printed this big circle onto regular printer paper and then with a pencil, I designed everything you see inside of here and then outlined in Sharpie. This Lamb of God design was inspired by this gorgeous stained glass window image from Hungary. So that's what I'm going to be looking at and referencing when I do my coloring with my markers. So I digitized this and I actually shrunk it down a little bit and traced it onto my Arsh 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. So that's what you see here. If you want to do this with me, go ahead and print the design, trace it on, and let's jump in. So I will say the Windsor Newton watercolor markers are not nearly packaged as nicely as the Faber-Castell set, which is a little bit of a bummer, but honestly, it's just packaging. Can't judge a book by its cover, right? So here they are, great variety of colors. I didn't swatch these or anything yet. I'm just gonna kind of jump in, but I'm pretty familiar with these colors based on the tube paints. And if they're similar to the tube paints, I pretty much know what to expect. The transfer paper I use, by the way, is Richeson transfer paper. It comes in these really big rolls that you can cut down to whatever size you need. So I just place that on the watercolor paper and I put my design over the top and just use a pencil to trace it. And that's how I get my design onto my watercolor paper. Just wanted to demystify that for you. So we'll go ahead and start with our yellows because it's a good idea when you're working with anything water-based or watercolors to start with your lightest colors first. Right, so we're gonna take a look at this lemon yellow first, this lemon yellow hue. The Windsor Newton markers are designed a little bit differently from the Faber-Castell ones. So you can tell which end is which, not with a little picture. Like on the Faber-Castell marker, there was a picture where you could see which end was which. On this one, you have the, the marker tip is a different cap shape. So if you pull the cap off, there it is, a nice tiny marker tip. I actually like that this marker tip is quite a bit smaller than the Faber-Castell ones were. And then the brush pen looks like that. Also really nice fine tip, seems to be high quality. I really like the feel, the width of these markers. My first impression is already really positive. I like the heavy feel, the quality feel to these markers. And with any good quality art supply, it's going to tell you what pigment is included. And this one is PY3. So all of the Windsor Newton markers do have the pigment information on the marker itself. Such a plus. As I said, my design here was inspired by this gorgeous stained glass window. I'll include a link to that image on Unsplash. It's free on Unsplash, so you can take a look at that. I did copy the design of this halo around the lamp and these kind of swirly shapes behind it, but everything else is my own design, the flowers, the rocks, the shape of the lamp, the light coming down. So yeah, we'll start with our yellow here. Let's go ahead and start with the marker end, and I'm just gonna do basic coloring right now. Now let's see how that activates with the water brush. For those of you who don't know, a water brush is just a canister filled with water that's attached to a synthetic bristle brush, and the water comes through to the bristles, keeping it damp the whole time. So it is self-cleaning. You can just gently squeeze the canister to dispense water, and that works so well for these watercolor markers. So now I'm squeezing a little bit of water onto my watercolor paper. If it's too much, I can always blot on a paper towel to control that. And these markers do activate nicely. I have too much water in my brush, so I'm gonna blot on a paper towel. But yeah, you can see how the yellow is just spreading out beautifully. In my reference photo of the stained glass window, it has this really cool aged look to it. We're gonna try to replicate that a little bit with this painting.
cool about watercolor markers is that you can actually mix them on a palette. So all you do is you color a little bit onto your palette, dispersing some of the ink, some of the watercolor ink, and you can take a second color. In this case, I'm just gonna mix the, what is this color? I'm gonna mix the Prussian blue with some black to create more of a cool gray. And I'm gonna dip a watercolor brush in some water and then combine the two on the palette. And that basically becomes a watercolor paint for you. Just try not to splash and ruin your paper. So with this cool blue, I'm gonna use that to actually paint the wool of the lamb. And I might actually need a little bit more black. So let's do a little more of that. Yeah, I think that's a good color for the gray in the wool. So you can just use it like regular watercolor paint. It really is so fun. And the fact that you only need maybe one brush or your water brush is really helpful. And so you can soften your edges just like you would with normal watercolor paint, adding these wonderful little shadowy ripples indicating the soft wool on the lamb. The only thing about markers that are a little different from regular watercolors is that I find they are pretty hard to lift. You can see I dripped a little on the side of my paper here and pretty much couldn't scrub any of it out. So if you make a mistake, there is that. So just work slowly and carefully when you're using watercolor markers. A question some people ask about the watercolor markers is, do they reactivate again after they've dried for a few days? So could you set this aside and work on it again? The answer is absolutely yes. You can reactivate the paint. It does seem to work a little better fresh from the marker. However, it does reactivate. So feel free to set your artwork aside and keep working on it again another day. Yay, so our lovely little lamb now has some wool using my watered down black and Prussian blue. For pink, I can do the same thing. I can use alizarin crimson hue, and we can apply a little of that to the palette, and then just add a tiny bit of water with a brush to create pink for the inner ears of the lamb. The alizarin crimson hue by itself would just be too strong of a color. Here's my finished stained glass window. This was a total blast to paint, completely different from what I usually do, and I think that's what made it so fun and freeing. So I hope you guys will give this a try. If you've never designed your own coloring page, why not try it? Throw your own creativity into it and just have fun. My final thoughts about the Winsor Newton Pro markers, they're amazing. The quality is just as good as the Faber-Castell markers. The packaging may be not as good, but honestly that doesn't really matter. As long as your markers are performing really well and are highly water soluble, these do great. So 100% recommend these. You could definitely mix and match the two different brands, just depending on what colors you want. I like that the Winsor Newton sets, they offer sky tones, floral tones, landscape tones, a whole bunch of different sets just based on what you personally want to create. So I think that's really cool. You can also buy them separately. If you haven't already seen my other video about the Faber-Castell markers, be sure to check that one out and I'll see you over there.